Like, where do you start? And you're looking for that passion and that spark. And it's like, just start somewhere. You know, we can talk about like the best place to start being, you know, help desk or what, just, just start somewhere. You know, what you're doing today is not what you have to be doing tomorrow. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Bearded IT Dad, where we give you advice and insight on how to grow your career in the IT field. Today, we have a very special guest with us. We have Regina, who is the head of product and implementation, to tell her story in the IT field, how she got in the field, and what does it look like to be the head of product and implementation? That's not a typical title we see in the field. So welcome to the show. Did I pronounce your name right, Regina? Yep. Nailed, nailed it spot on. Awesome. Well, welcome to the show. Do you mind uh, introducing yourself to everyone and kind of what you do for a living? Yeah, sure. So um, as you said, my name is Regina and I'm the head of product and implementation. It's really a new field that's really kind of coming out. If you go on YouTube, you're going to find so many YouTubers in there that do the day in the life of. And I'd like to actually kind of give you a glimpse of what it actually is because they all start with coffee and that's about the most accurate part of the video, because it's always going to start with coffee in this role. Um, But basically what that means is the products and the software that we create for our users, I am in charge of kind of conceptualizing at the beginning, asking the questions of the why behind the why, and should we even build this or can we improve and kind of refurbish something that we already have? But then I get the great honor of actually taking that and rolling it out to our users, which gives me a really great kind of a full cycle view of this is what our users like. This is what was really successful. This is what they liked because I actually visit a lot of them in person for my case study interviews and also for some training and learning and development. So then when we start our next product, and I'm always all the way back here at step one, I have this really great insight of how the users are going to kind of respond to that based on the past history of our products. So that's a really broad view, overhead view of it. But there's a lot more in there of the day to day. That's actually really cool. And it sounds like you kind of get to be a, a, not a Jack, but maybe a Jill of all trades. Um, you know, you get to do like some project management, you know, some UX uh, design and, you know, you get that feedback from the customers and then you get to bring it all around full circle when you get to work on your next, next uh, project or you know, product you're working on. Yep. You nailed it. Spot on. I absolutely am a jack of all trades. I guess if you were kind of going to compare me to something that maybe a lot of people can identify with, if you ever played World of Warcraft, I was a druid. Oh, yeah. So (laughs) I'm the druid of my industry. I, I work with marketing. I work with communications. I work with outside software and development partners. I mean, it's just... It's truly one of those things where if basically with my company, if it involves technology in some way, my name is usually on those emails and I'm involved in those conversations. Let's take a little bit deeper dive into really what your day actually looks like. You know, I know you started off, it sounds like with a big giant cup of coffee, like (laughs) most of us in this field do. Um, But what does it look like? Like, what are some of the more detailed tasks you're kind of working on? Sure. So usually it's a darker blend in the morning mixed with some half and half. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> I always love those videos because they get really intense on like how they make the coffee and then they just kind of play music exactly. and tell you nothing about what they're doing and just show them like typing. I'm like, I do that too. Um, yeah. So I think that the best way to describe it is with this role, because you have so many coals in the fire and you're involved in so many things that it's really neat because your days look different. You have to really, really protect your schedule. I actually schedule the first hour of my day. Every day is absolutely no meetings because I just need that time to kind of prepare for what that day is going to be like because it's going to be a gear change from the day before. So for example, Mondays, I have meetings with my internal team. I actually, with the implementation Um, role, part of my role. I oversee the learning and development department, which I started back in the day. So I have a great love for. And just making sure that like the user user success specialist, the um, -the on-the-road trainer, they all kind of know what they're going to do for the week and just make sure that they have a good idea and a good grasp on what their roles and tasks are for that week. Because then I just let them go, which is really great. We have an amazing team that I can do that. And then on Tuesdays, I work, for example, with a lot of our outside partners, our SEO optimization partners, our marketing department, and then our also our group customers. So those would be basically our users that 
are like a multi-site owner compared to a single site owner, et cetera. And then Wednesdays, it's basically just a recap of those two days and preparing for now the technical side of things. On Thursday, I have meetings with the head of the IT department to kind of prioritize some tasks. And then on Friday, I have another meeting with a partner that we're working with on a project right now that's an external partner. And then I kind of wrap all of that up with the developers so that on Monday, when they come back in and they do their sprints, they know exactly kind of what feedback I have for them that relates to our outside partners. So internally, they can kind of make those preparations for their next sprint. And it's great because all of our sprints are named after Pokemon, which is how I knew I chose the right team. <laughs> We're on Xerneas right now. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so cool. Great so cool. I love, it's great being nerdy with other nerdies. <laughs> That that is, and that that it keeps it so much more fun and interesting. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of people come to me asking me, you know, what it takes to get into the job field. And I'm like, a first thing I ask is, why do you want to get in the job field? Are you just into it? Like you just want to do it for the money? Because I can tell you, you're going to be miserable. But if you have a passion for this this stuff, the the job is you're never going to work a day in your life again. I mean, you're going to have days where you're going to work your butt off. Don't get me wrong. But when you have that passion and that fire, you're going to go so much further because you're going to have that desire to keep on studying and learning and just evolving your skills. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, I interview for a lot of our roles and even our developers, you know, we have a head of IT that works with them, but I'm basically their first point of contact to just basically kind of in, you know, check their engagement with the role before passing it over so that they can kind of do their technical tests and things like that with the development team. And, you know, I always ask the basic questions of, you know, why do you want this job and what do you know about this role? And I'll just give you a tip right now. If you're preparing for an interview, and you have an entire week to prepare, you should know something about the role, about the company when you go into that conversation, because it's going to be asked, yes, but whenever you're in an interview, you should always think of it as like you're interviewing that company and that role as well. And so if you're right. not even looking it up and you have no idea what you're interviewing for and you have zero passion about it, I have literally interviewed people and asked them, what do you know about this company? And they can't answer it. And I had one the other day. I'm just going to put somebody on blast. I'm not going to mention their name or anything, but just an example. <laughs> I asked them why they wanted the job. And they said, because it was work from home. And they actually couldn't even tell me what they were interviewing for. Oh, and it's like, that's so you know, frustrating. That, yeah. And yeah. in the tech industry, it's challenging. There are hard days and there are deadlines and there's a lot of teamwork that's involved in that. You really want somebody who's coming into it because they've connected with it in some way or they're looking for a good team or they, you know, just are looking yeah. for to grow themselves and to show up and not even know what you're interviewing for when you had a whole week to prepare is not a good look. Don't do that. <laughs> no. And, you know, and. That, that brings up two of my biggest frustrations, you know, like me, whenever I apply for a new job, like I'm scouring as many resources as I can trying to find like past news articles, past, mm -hmm. you know, website versions, like I'll use things like the Wayback machine, you know, and look at like their website and, you know, like five years ago and compare it to what they're doing now and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I try to get a good history lesson on the company that way. When they're talking about things in your interview, you can bring them bring up, oh, yeah, I saw you guys actually did such and such like <laughs> two years ago. And now you've migrated to this. And instantly you're going to get you're going to be taken to the next level because they're going to show it's going to show several things. It's going to show that one, you know how to do your research and find out information. Two, it's going to show you're actually interested in the job and you want to work there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. But then, like you just mentioned, the the whole work from home thing, you know, I, I would love to work from home. I think working from home is the greatest thing. But I think a lot of people, unfortunately, want to, it's like the horse before the carriage type of thing, where I think the expectations of coming into the field and starting out in a work from home position is really I don't think it's realistic. I think mm -hmm. you have to at least do some time with your team and learn some of those skills before you can actually work from home and just applying for a job because it's a work from home is just a setup for failure. 
Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, my role, it actually did start off as work from home, kind of. So when I first started, like I mentioned with my company, they were really just breaking into making their own in-house software and our own proprietary product. And so there was no real learning and development or training for these things, but we had such a good client base that we didn't want to just send them an email saying, well, here's a log on for it. Good luck. You know, that does not work for your right. users. Right. So I actually traveled to our locations and we have over 300 just in the U S alone. And I think That's I crazy. went to, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And we're in Europe and Canada and Africa and Asia. I mean, just, we're all over. And so I think I traveled to 80 locations my first year. Wow. So I was like a road warrior. So <laughs> even though, yeah, so even though I was working from home, I was actually in all of these locations. So basically I had 80 offices throughout the year and I wouldn't trade That's that crazy. for the world. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of travel, let me tell you. And I wouldn't trade that for the world because kind of, I think what you were saying there too, like, it's not just a technical skill that you're doing at your job. Like you have to, like, if you're coding, for example, for example, you have to code with your user in mind. And if you've never actually met your user, that's really difficult to do. And you can do that based on the feedback of someone like myself, who's a product manager who goes out and they do those um, case studies, those personality reviews and things like that and build those user stories. You can do that. But if you didn't have someone doing that, you just get this gene generic product and you never shine and it's never special for your customers. And like we've custom made this for them. And I don't think it would be as successful if I hadn't had boots on the ground with so many locations and meeting the people. Absolutely. So I, I definitely hear what you're saying. It's definitely a challenge if you want to go straight from work to home, especially if you're entering into a new career and this is all new for you, it's going to be a challenge. Absolutely. And, I, and by all means, I'm not saying it's not possible because I know plenty of people are doing it. It's just going to be more difficult for you. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to have a, some unique challenges ahead of you. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, one of the questions I got is for people who are actually interested in Getting into a role like a product management, what advice do you have for them, you know, on how to start out? You know, that's, you know, there, it's not like, you know, there's just a certification you can go get and boom, you're a product manager overnight. You know, that's a little bit more of a different path, I feel like. What what are some recommendations you have? You're absolutely right. I mean, there are a lot of really great resources out there. And fortunately, quite a few of them are free, which is really nice. But if you want like an actual product manager certification, they can be very pricey. But the thing is, is it is exactly what you were saying. It's not something where you can kind of just read a book about it because there is a lot of emotion that is kind of surprising for people in product development. It's not just the technical skills like we were talking about. And so you really have to learn how to have conversations with people. So to get into the role, I think the the steps that I would really recommend if you're joining a new company or with your current company is to first get into training. So training current products to your current users or to new users, because honestly, that's the absolute best way to get so much information. You, you learn about the product. You learn about how your developers interact with your current product. You get so familiar with it that when somebody starts talking about, ooh, what if we do this? You can say with knowledge, like, hey, actually, we, we have something that's similar to that. Can we work with that instead of creating something all new? Or maybe we can add an additional function to something that we currently have. But then you also get this really great glimpse of your users at a time that you would never get to see them out again, day one touching your product. That, it, it's priceless. It's priceless to sit down and watch them touch it for the first time because that is really where you see the room for improvement and where you fall down or where you succeed. Because if they have to sit down and you have to do a lot as a trainer, you're not building it right. And so it's, it's just powerful. And then from there, I recommend moving into product that way. And so you have this great knowledge, you have this great user knowledge, product knowledge, how your developers are working, 
and what you're building. And that's, that's my number one way that I would say to do it. And then check out mind the product. So it's this amazing convention that happens every year, multiple locations and things like that. And there's just some great product leaders that just give some great talks. And so that's actually how I even discovered this role. I never even knew this role existed until I was kind of looking at what do I want to do next with my career? And I was looking into like project management. I was looking at more into learning and development because I felt like there was a need within my company. But, you know, how do you know to ask a question if you don't know the question exists? And so I couldn't quite place what that need was. I was still trying to figure it out. And I was watching this video and you ever notice like sometimes a video will just automatically play after you're done watching one. It just happened to be a product manager, mind the product talk. And I, I can't remember, I believe his name was Dave and I can't remember the last name, but it was basically what he had learned in his entire career as a product management shrunk down to 10 minutes. Wow. And it was so good that I literally watched product manager videos for like the next six hours straight. And I got a notebook out, like actually paused and like got a notebook and I was taking notes and I was like, oh my gosh, if we did this, the result would be this in my company. That's where we're missing it. That's, and I felt like... I could just, you ever watch the Da Vinci the Code? Aha moment. Yeah, like you read the oh, Da Vinci yes. Code. And yeah, yeah. It was like that moment. I was like, oh, this equals that. And then yeah, it was just so great. And I'll, I remember I got done with it all. And I told my husband, I was like, I have found my thing. Like I couldn't yep. wait to watch more videos about it. And I put a bunch of holds on books at the library for it. And it was just, it's so cool. And it was just like a few minutes earlier. I never even knew that existed or was a thing. Cause like I said, it's pretty new. So go down the YouTube that, rabbit that, hole, my friends. <laughs> yes. Well, and that, that feeling, you know, you know, you're finally in the right place. Like, you know, a lot of people come to me and like, they don't quite know what they want to do yet. They don't know, like they have a feeling they want to be something technology wise, but they don't know what to do. So like I, a lot of times I'll say, well, start off with the help desk position because you get exposure to everything. Then mm-hmm. getting that exposure. And once you get that aha moment, like that light bulb goes off and that spark gets ignited. Like it just, you know, you're in the right spot. And like, for me, that was networking. I, I, when I took my first Cisco CCNA class back in high school, which is so long ago now, I feel like, but, uh, <laughs> it was just like, how long ago that uh, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. But like watching, like, you know, doing like a network simulator, you know, we had packet tracer back in the day and watching the visualization of the packets flow through the, between the computers and the network devices. That was like, Oh my gosh, this was so cool. And, you know, it just grew from there now now i'm the director of a network operations for like an internet provider i'm literally in control of the internet <laughs> you know so that's so cool um you know to hear someone's story how they they got that spark as well and that's like i said once you get that spark you really know you're in the right field and you just need to like double down and like just absorb as much knowledge as you can mm-hmm. i feel so yeah i i think you're exactly uh, right and i think that you know Whenever you're starting, so I have coached a few people kind of how to get into technology because I think it's just one of those things of exactly what you're saying. Like, where do you start? And you're looking for that passion and that spark. And it's like, just start somewhere. You know, we can talk about like the best place to start being, you know, help desk or what, just just start somewhere. You know, what you're doing today is not what you have to be doing tomorrow. And so just start, just, just do something. <laughs> Really hope you guys learned a lot from today's video. And in the next video, we're actually going to be diving back in with Regina and talking about how she got her start in the field as a project manager with absolutely no experience in prior training. So if you like that, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell icon to receive notifications when we release new videos. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And until next time, keep learning.